strawberry shot. I don't know why, but strawberries and raspberries always remind me of nipples. What did he say? Oh, nipples of Mother Nature. I don't know what it is. Okay, next on our list is going to be toast, and then we have pickle, and then we have in line, it is looks like it's going to be, so we have Dnat, Minx, Boo Boo, Shorty, and Tommy. So we have five people after that. So we're doing a total of eight VOD reviews today. So if you heard your name, is there room for one VOD against two cheaters? Shorty, you are on our list. Damn so many people today. These are very high in demand, guys. I, I charge a lot less than most coaches on the platform and people like how in depth I do them. So I do try to give you guys the most bang for your buck available. But um, yeah, people are like, oh shit, only 10 bucks? That fire. So I got you, Shorty. Hanzo is a whole 1.3 second relay after one shot, like a G. I got you, Owen. We're all donated. Every single one of those people are donated. I'm gonna take notes. A whole ten dollars. I know. Everyone else out here charging fifty. I'm I'm a fifth. <laughs> what I charge for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is normally by like the standard of the average of the of Overwatch coaching, is usually one fifty to one eighty. I charge fifty bucks. That's it. If you guys are curious about that, take a look at our section in the Discord. We have people like you that have done the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the reviews that they've left. So if you don't want to just take my word for it, we have a couple people in here that also have done the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me even this week. So I deal with people with anxiety, um, um, uh, nervousness, shyness, introverts, extroverts, people with physical uh, limitations or impairments uh, who do not... Okay. Okay, so that right there, fantastic. First thing out the gate is we hear slash see slash kind of feel that juicy turret, not turret, the bastion, bastion boy with the grenade, right? So that instantly gives us information. We do the whole basics of our blueprint, move info elims. So nade goes out, you now know they have a bastion, you see the turret form, you get up in his face, you force it, you then notice an Ana that is hard scoped in, kind of throwing, and then you capitalize in pressure. Now, Owen, what are the two cooldowns that Ana has that makes it kind of less or more likely for you to be able to dive and kill her? It's her nade and her sleep, right? So watch that again. This right here, sleep and antsy, very good. Now, we can agree if she has them, harder to kill. If she does not have them, easier to kill, right? There's the Ansi, there's the Sleep. Now, if I were to ask you, Owen, is the Ana now easier to kill or harder to kill? The answer is easier, right? So what do you think you should do looking at this half HP Ana with none of her resources away from her team? Should you A, confirm the kill that's in front of you Remember, move info elims, or do we say, oh, there's nothing to kill, and we run away from her. We kill her, right? A big thing with a lot of these dive heroes, we did this with Bane as well, is he had a really bad habit, is he would look at an Ana, had cooldowns, and be like, that's scary. Force them out of her, and then still go, okay, scary. But they're no longer scary. Thank you, Hansom, I appreciate you. I got you, you'll get you in as well. So remember, move info elims. The information that we have gotten, because we did the moving already, is that this thing no longer has their resources, meaning our chance to kill or our success potential to kill is higher. So our next job, move info elims, we moved, we got the info, we go for the most immediate value that's there and presented to us. Once we confirm, the Ana drops, we then go back and we move again. Does that make sense? Okay, confirm kills based on resources. Absolutely, this entire game is resources in versus resources out. Do you see how she was able to get all of her cooldowns back again? Because of that, how much time that passed.
Good. It's absolutely fine. We can stay here a bit longer because of our passive. Right here, our goal is to live. If we force a cooldown, awesome. Absolutely fine. Now we just chill and rotate. Good job. More no fade. Okay. All right, Owen. I'm gonna ask you a crazy question. I'm gonna rewind it back, and I want you to take note. They lost someone. Now, are you attacking or are you defending? You're attacking, right? So the thing that we like to say is that the burden of push is on the attackers, and the privilege of map control is for the defenders. In short, what that means is, understanding what attack and defense is different in this game, for attacking, every pick, every ult, every cooldown, every resource, your responsibility and job is to go, how do I get in the castle that they have in front of me? And it's your job to try to do everything you possibly can that results in you saying, yes. Versus when you're defending, you are the one in the castle. You have all these strong parts of the map that you have access to to set up before the fight. And everything that you are doing, your ults, your cooldowns, your buttons, your pew pew, your positioning, everything, is an attempt to tell the attacking team no. So one is yes, and the other one is no. Because as that clock ticks down, the, pr the burden of push is for the attackers, but as that clock ticks down, defense is the one that's actually getting value right so long drawn out fights that result in nothing getting done is the defensive advantage versus if things are getting done and there's momentum building forward that's for the attackers now i'm going to play this back again i want you to pay attention to how many of their team is already dead and then you tell me whether or not we should have ulted there okay watch closely Okay. So we got their Torb. We already have what we call a man advantage. That's one already done. So we already have an advantage for this push, which is great because we're the ones attacking, right? So the, the likelihood that we're going to need our blade is a lot lower, but we're at 83%. We can maybe build the rest of our blade for the rest of this fight, right? Let's see what happens next. Oh, that's another pick. It's now a 5v3 and they don't have their tank. They're down their DPS, they don't have their tank, and the next biggest source of damage is that Bastion turret form that's currently being burned. This is the magical moment in our head where we need to recognize and go, we've already won this fight, so let's just clean up and not be wasteful. Makes sense? But our brain goes, Morino fade, I am Necros. And then you get a little excited and you go in. Do we see how this is like 127% wasteful and it is what we call overkill? Because this is a cleanup. We've already won the fight, right? We have five minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. We are what we call rolling and schlonging right now. Instead, save your blade so you have it for the next fight. Why use it now? You don't need to. Make sense? All right, I mean, that'll look cool for TikTok, I guess. Use Blade for Dominus, it's a mind game. All right, well. Okay. Big thing, hit tab in between fights. Please, 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 please hit tab in between fights. And a big, big rule of thumb in chat, and this is for any ELO, you can always look for pre-poke in between fights, but if the payload is moving, there is a significantly obvious thing that should pop up in your head, and it's, I do not need to be risky right now. On defense, they have to come to you. On offense, I don't need to take more risk than I need to. No.
Good patience. Okay, so. Magical moment, chat. Is this fight winnable? Or is this fight already lost? You had a question? Go ahead, Stone. Winnable? Why is it winnable? Why do you think it's winnable? Lost down there, Brig. That's th that's that's your Brig. Oh, David said lost. Okay, good. So David, you are correct. You're already down Brig. Now, they've committed Nano, which is good and fantastic. And in this ELO, you're going to see a lot of wasted ultimates. Why is it in your best interest to end this fight as quickly as possible? Meaning get out, reset, because the time is against you. You're the attackers. So once we realize we're losing people, I would rather have you poke, farm a bit, reset, because you already had to enter this fight staggered anyway. So you back out, which is winnable but risky. Your team has Torb and Moira ults. This is the enemy team. This right here is the team that we're looking at. Owen here is the Genji. This is our team. We have already committed Hog ult. Our Brigitte is dead. We do not have EMP, we do not have Blade, and we do not have Window. They have... One alt, two alt, three alt. Now, it could very easily happen that because they're very, very silly people, they just panic and we see three alts get fired off. Maybe Hog even builds their alt and uses it too, even though they've already won this fight. This happens more than you think. This is 100% a resource waste. With these four ultimates, and they didn't even need the nano, with these four ultimates, they could hold this for at least two and a half team fights. Easily, 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 easily. Because you guys are down so much on alt economy. But we'll see what happens. So the reason it's better for you to just get out and not keep committing to this fight is because there's a very minuscule chance of you winning it. And it's better to just regroup with your whole team and let them waste ultimates. That is hilarious. So, yeah, no nano, no coal. If they Torbolt right now, I'll throw up. Okay, they didn't, we're good. That's hilarious. Now, I've never seen this VOD before, right, Owen? It's almost like I knew they were gonna waste something. <laughs> Happens more than you think. Okay. This right here. And this is gonna be super big. This is before the fight even starts. This is like, let's go back to before we leave spawn. Right about here. This is good. Okay, so where is your team right now? We've gone bridge. We have a brig here. Our hog and our honor are still falling back. Our sombra is feeding and trolling. Right here, what are we waiting for in order to be able to push forward? Owen, oh, what are the what are the members of your team that you're like, all right, you guys are here? Okay, then we can go in. So who are you waiting for to give you the green light of we can move and do something? Sombra? No, why Sombra? Or me? Where is your Ana and your Hog? Let me let me simplify the question. Do you have a better chance of taking a fight into five people if you also have five people? Or do you have a better chance of taking a fight against five people if there's two of you? You're good, Owen. So that's what I'm saying is we're just looking for a regroup. A really, really big thing that I don't know, it, it, I see in Diamond lobbies, I even see in Masters lobbies, where people forget that there's other members of their team and they just go in without them or they take unnecessary positional risk when they don't need to. That's a little bit more lower ELO. But then in Diamond and Masters, and this is kind of like a panic thing, I think, where they tunnel vision a bit too much. And again, Masters and Diamond players do this too, is they regroup but once they're regrouped, they just go in immediate and they forget the mobility um, rates of other members of their team. So yes, they'll wait for the Ana and they'll wait for the Brig to be where they are. And then they just go, go, go. And they forget that, well, okay, your Ana can't move as fast as you can. Or even worse is they'll burn a cooldown to be a part of the go, 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 as opposed to using it with intention other than just mobility. So that's a big, big part of that as well. So this is not an uncommon thing. And yes, there's different scenarios in which it looks like this or looks like that. But a big thing, and this is very simple, is my team here? Yes. All right, let's look to take some space. Is my team not here? It's gonna be harder for me to take space. And the same is on the inverse. If you're defending and your team is there, easier to hold that space. If your team is not, you're probably going to be more likely to give it up if it is tried to pressure uh, away from you. 
Poke with your primary. Poke, look for information. Move info elims. If you can't get an elim, you just keep moving and getting more information until you can. But here you're going to get absolutely touched and tickled. The reach on that is, is crazy, by the way, after that buff. Put it on my bill. You're wild. Okay. How many people we got? I don't know. I think our whole team is dead. Play it again. We lost our brig. See if you can help the hog, but we are not over committing here. We are absolutely not over committing here. Right here, they have a Hogwarts. Let's see if we can help with the Hogwarts. We can't help with the Hogwarts. Here we are living and we are getting out. Why are we living and getting out? Because we have just lost three people. Uh, Ronan, we have like seven people in line. Um, so we, don't worry, we're doing them again on Thursday. These are very high demand and they're first come first serve y'all. So keep that in mind for the bot reviews. I can't let my homies just die like that. What was I thinking that situation? I died. Owen, remember what we say? You are the most important person in the lobby. Your life matters more than everyone else. And you are the carry. I don't give a blue nipple if they die doing something stupid. If you also go in and die, you're now giving them all charge. You're now making it taking even longer to regroup. And you're going to be playing with the same her that they are. And I want you being more intelligent than the people around you. Not at the same intelligence or even less than, okay? We make you better. I don't want you doing the same bad habits as the people around you. All right, let's see what you got. Fat, thick, delicious. That was dashable, but you're good. You were good patience on that. I like it. Hey, dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a big thing I'm going to have you do is I want you to start to paying attention to whether we have capped or not capped because these overextensions after the fight is won, that's all, that, that's like a big part of this. It's going to really help your deaths pretend, so you're actually there more more actively. Right now, their Torb is a ninny. Just wasted alt for what reason? He put it on payload and there's no one on payload. He put it on payload and there's no one on payload. Chat, was that a... I already kind of spoiled it. It was a bad alt. So what what do we do here? I have an issue with overheating. Just, just you know, eat some ice of all. Hey, Rogers, good to see you. Maybe he has feelings for the cart. That was... That was sussy. Okay, let's take a look at this ultimate. And this is gonna be a couple examples we can do. This ultimate did absolutely nothing. So are we gonna go stand on the cart or are we gonna go do something productive with the fact that he just wasted something? This is the equivalence of a Zarya missing her grab or a Kiriko using Kitsune with no one there to capitalize or a Baptiste using window. Now, what most players will do is they'll just stare at it and go, pretty, or they'll walk in front of the window, or they'll walk into the kitsune, or they'll walk into the grav, God forbid. Instead, just go, all right, well, I can't stand there for a little bit, so they get a little bit of zoning value. And we look for something of value, and we maybe take one of the other th two lanes available. Every single map on this game, every single one, even maps like Circuit Royale, or the Flashpoint maps, Relative to the objective, there's always going to be multiple lanes. I see one right here. I see one here. This is main lane. And then I see another one here. Every single map has this. So if you cannot go here and look for the other two, if this is ocupado and you can't quite do much here, and maybe this is less than savory, there's a whole other one over here. Use the map to your advantage. Don't just stare at stuff. This is a horrible ultimate. So if you even wanted to engage on the Torb, you absolutely could. Primary poke him. See if you can get him low. Force some cooldowns. Even that's valuable. There's a play being made to the left. Maybe you can help by either directly being there or keeping resources away from that fight and isolating something. You're going to see a lot of these wasted ultimates. 
we've established that their their Ana is meh, their Mora likes to waste alt, their Torb likes to waste alt, their Hog likes to waste alt, and their Sombra is kind of AFK. So this should be a very, very farmable team that you're playing against. Very, very farmable. Oh, we are up in the business. Holy mother of cow. Oh, we just went in without our deflect. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. How are you not dead? Oh, and I'm gonna shake you. We are even right now. Who has spawn advantage? We have spawn advantage. Let it play. They lose another. I'm in a movie, I'm sorry. We lose our tank. Our Torb is either back or about to be. Do you really need Blade to finish this hog? That is my question. 20 HP. Do you really need Blade to finish this hog? You don't think it's right click and a melee would be enough to kill a 20 HP hog? No, really? Because you have reduced healing on him, even if he's being healed by this, you know, wherever the hell the Ana is, right? Okay. That's kind of interesting. He fell over before you even swung at him. And then you just got nanoed. I'm gonna throw up, dude. He has to take the kill, but extinguished. he was already dead. We already won the whole fight. The fight was won. We had already gotten everybody, and we just used Nano Blade for decoration. Oh, and do you see how often people waste stuff? They're just pushing buttons. If you can be the one person that is not just pushing buttons and pays attention to the world around you, you will do significantly better. And that's what throws you into a true learning environment. For the stats, exactly. It looked cool. Good confirmation. Huge. Good confirm. I'll. I, that's okay. That's okay. I'm not mad at that. I'm glad we're confirming kills. We didn't do that in the beginning of the game, and we're doing it now. We're kind of up in it a little bit, but that's okay. The Torbjorn isolated kill. The Ana finished the def. Excuse me. The deflect. Good. Oh, and good. Imagine if you had Nanoblade. <laughs> All right, a little pokey pokey. And we turn ourselves a huge hit on the wall. Okay. Owen. I'm gonna beg of you. Stop dashing their tank when he has full health. Nice confirm. That was a good dash. I like it. Oh my god. No LOS. The only scenario in which that is okay, Owen, is if you're stopping them from touching. I don't want to see you do that in any other situation, okay? You understand? So, already fantastic from the beginning of the VOD versus now. Good confirmation on kills. He just aimed at Hog with Blade. You know what? It was mind games. That's what you said earlier, right, y'all? It was mind games. I was there for over an hour cleaning the bathrooms. That sounds shitty. Ba bum sh I'm sorry, that was a terrible joke. That was a terrible joke, terrible joke. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. If you're built diff, go for it. If not, I'm I'm really not liking all oh my I that aha ba la ba ba. We take those do yes, Rin. Nice. W orb. 
Okay, Owen. I already don't like being up here in the first place because if you're using to get information and pre-poke, awesome, but then you go up and over and you get the hell out because if this wasn't gold or plat, you would be so dead. So. You killed one of the ninnies. Now, which ninny died? I'm pulling five man aggro. <laughs> Feels like a death trap. That's because it is. So which ninny died? They're tanked. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, does it become more or less likely that they're going to be able to push your team and win this fight if you guys still have five people keeping in mind the burden of pushes and the attackers the privilege of map controls for the defenders it's going to be harder for them right so they're up one and it's a big one it's their tank we dash in we now have no cooldowns and we're staring at three people and there are bullets coming out of that guy's gun If that soldier had a monitor, you would be dead. Double jump, you are in a six inch tall cupboard. How are you gonna double jump? Hey, Nicole. It is insane that you are alive. Okay, you lived and you're chilling. You're fine, right? We now have 47 health, we've burned deflect. We're about to get our dash back, chat. Do we play it smart, play for our map control, or are we going all in? We got another pick. You're going in again without any cooldowns. All in kill, I don't know, one second on dash. What, what I'm saying is this, Owen. You're very tunnel vision, and the only reason that this risk is working out is because you're playing in this elo, and these people are... To put it politely, not good. But if you play against someone that is good, you are going to explode. This is why we are teaching you to be a smarter player overall, so that you know what you can get away with, why you got away with it, and then what you realistically cannot because of pattern recognition. If you realize that you are playing against what we call shitters, then yes, you can get away with riskier shitter activity but if they are not the shitters we're gonna get punished a lot more than not okay and i don't want you developing or encouraging bad habits because of this fantastic I, just, I don't understand how you're not dead. I don't understand how you're not dead. They're just pushing buttons. This is insane. <laughs> it has nothing to do with aim. It has nothing to do with aim. Owen, do you have to push them or do they have to push you? Never go dash first. I agree with you. Owen, do you have to push them or do they have to push you? The burden of pushes for the attacking team. Are they in any situation, position, anything where your team or the objective is actually at risk of being taken? pressured, pushed, anything. They barely know how to tie their shoes. They've just left the house and they forgot to wear pants. Why are we blading? Especially in this elo where we now we've also decided to do, oh, I guess we're pushing Q and our Brigitte decides to go, I have a button. God forbid our Sombra also goes, I don't want to be left out and also pushes Q. I'm going to throw up if the Sombra also ults. I'm going to actually vomit.
Alright, good. I don't have to be sick on stream. I have pants. Good. Don't take them off in the middle of target. You're going to get arrested. And then we switch D.Va. That'll do it. Oh, and if you do not stop dashing for bleed damage, I swear to gosh. See, right there, you even looked like, can I get out? You're going to dash in, aren't you? This way, you're going to dash in. You're going to... No, oh! We're learning. We're learning. That was a good EMP, because it opens up the fight. It stops their push. It was a little bit late, but it's fine. Oh my god. Chat, really quick. Two swings and a dash. If you miss GG, absolutely. Okay. Now, Owen and chat, I want you all to pay attention to this. What did their Arisa just do that we talked about Owen earlier in the VOD? The previous fight is still coming and they just push W they don't even know what planet they're on, and they've continued to walk in to be in the same fight twice, and where's the rest of their team? They have a Torb there, and they have a Kitty there. Would it not make more sense for the Orisa to wait an extra five to eight seconds and then push the team in full? Because again, the burden of push is for the attackers. This is the exact same thing. So when I tell you guys these mistakes keep Seems like a problem with lots of olds. I see diamonds do this. I see the way that I see diamonds and masters do it, it's still fundamentally the same thing. It's they regroup, but then their engages are horrible because they keep forgetting that some characters move faster than other ones. I've seen masters genjis that go, all right, but we're supposed to take good. Okay, I'm going in. And they hard LOS the rest of their team, explode and go, where are my supports? I'm like, well, you individual you just left them in a different area code and they can't rotate as fast as you can because you just use dash blade dash just to go in and you're around a corner so still thing are you using on a cooldown defensively aggressively this season for climbing you kind of Ana is kind of becoming this stay alive primary mainly for value and you use your you use your nade and your resources to kind of build nano as quickly as possible and then your sleep actually becomes your playmaker which i don't like but it kind of is and right now it's harder especially for you to take make plays with your ansi unless you're the full follow-up because of how many shots it takes for you to finish fights and you need your team to follow up so ana is middle of the pack when it comes to climbing from bronze to gm uh yes nicole we are and zach with the gift itself for ronin thank you so much zach awesome sauce so ana you are kind of a ult bot at right now but there's an asterisk behind that i explain it in my meta tier list video oh -ho -ho. and now chat is it the support's fault that the orissa died there or is the orissa what we call single-handedly trying to end world hunger they're feeding right good Yes, yeah, Storm. It's always the support's fault. Okay. Owen. So big takeaways again are for the love of God. I need you to be paying attention to what is around you. Stop committing into the middle of their team with all of your cooldowns. And I need you to read the fights. Keep an eye on that kill feed. There's even a fun sound effect that goes Bang! whenever you have lost someone on your team and a different ding when someone on their team has died. So keep an eye on the fight. I do not want you just blading because Mora used fade! But she's already half health and their Ana is about to get messed up in the corner anyway. Instead, look for the next fight. 
I have a question though. Go ahead, Owen. What's up? Anyway, that is going to be us. This might be a YouTube VOD review that we do. And so future me, um, this is a gold Genji player. Oh, ho, 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 ho. This is really good feedback. Even if it isn't my VOD, I appreciate you. Yeah. I'm going to play with that just brawl mentality. Most people do, and it makes them explode because people think that they have health pools that they don't have. People think that they're invincible when they're not, and they're not reading reality. They're just trying to force their own reality. That is ultimate. Yeah, Ronan, so another way that's called, it's called neutral game. So whether you're talking about fighting games, FPS games, MOBAs, you know, we could use League of Legends even, or Valorant as an example, there is a beginning of a fight, middle of a fight, end of a fight and there's neutral game versus um actual i guess you would call it uh combo potential walker so you play fighting games right so having a strong neutral game whether you're playing smash brothers or you're playing overwatch is an actual real thing it's essentially what it is in terms of overwatch it is what do you have in terms of consistent re-expendable resources that are always available to you or they take minimal time to get them back again. For example, a reload. So cooldowns are cooldowns for a reason. There, there's downtime associated with them. But using your primary, your left click and your right click, that's your neutral game. And you get it back as quickly as it takes to reload your weapon. That's your neutral. Brig, it's your left click and your shield. Reinhardt, it's your hammer and your shield. Not a fire strike, because that's, that's not a neutral. Does that make sense? Okay, next on our list is going to be toast. And then we have pickle. And then we have in line, it is looks like it's going to be... So we have Dnat, Minx, Boo Boo, Shorty, and Tommy. So we have five people after that. So we're doing a total of eight VOD reviews today. So if you heard your name, is there room for one VOD against two cheaters? Shorty, you are on our list. Damn so many people today. These are very high in demand, guys. I, I charge a lot less than most coaches on the platform, and people like how in-depth I do them. So I do try to give you guys the most bang for your buck available. But um, yeah, people are like, oh shit, only 10 bucks? Like, fuck. So I got you, Shorty. Ponzo is a whole 1.3 second relay after one shot, like a G. I got you, Owen. We're all donated. Every single one of those people are donated. I'm going to take notes. A whole $10. I know. Everyone else out here charging $50. i am I'm a fifth. <laughs> what I charge for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is normally by like the standard of the average of the of Overwatch coaching, is usually $150 to $180. I charge $50. Bucks. That's it. If you guys are curious about that, take a look at our section in the Discord. We have people like you that have done the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the reviews that they've left. So if you don't want to just take my word for it, we have a couple people in here that also have done the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me even this week. So I deal with people with anxiety, um, um, uh, nervousness, shyness, introverts, extroverts, people with physical uh, limitations or impairments uh, who do not.